Hello and welcome to Hornbill TV's Prime at 9. I'm Naomi Kikon. Bharatiya Janata Party National President J.P. Nadda on Saturday announced a crucial meeting on December 5 and 6, international capital to be attended by all key office bearers of the party from across states to decide the road to the 2024 general elections. Those in the know of the matter have said that Nadda will preside over this two-day meeting and Prime Minister Narendra Modi is also likely to address the concluding session virtually on Tuesday. With last day of campaigning for the Gujarat Assembly elections coming to a close on Saturday and that for the Municipal Corporation of Delhi, polls over on Friday, the meeting will focus on future strategies and will see the attendance of all the national office bearers. According to the party sources, the meeting has been called to discuss the strategy and preparations for the 2024 Lok Sabha elections and 2023 Assembly elections in several states. Besides, the national office bearers of the party in charge and co-in charge of all the states, state presidents and organization general secretaries of all states have also been called for the meeting. Kohima today observed the International Day of Persons with Disabilities 2022 with the team Transformative Solutions for Inclusive Development the role of innovation in fueling an accessible and equitable world. The event was conducted at the NPCC Convention Hall in Kohima. Addressing the occasion, Kaisa Rio, the wife of Nagaland Chief Minister, called it a sad reality that in many societies, including the state, persons with disabilities often face physical, social, economic and attitudinal barriers that exclude them from participating fully and effectively as equal members of their society. Stigma, discrimination and neglect all too often mean that they experience poorer health, lower educational achievements, lower employment and labor force participation rates and higher rates of poverty than the rest of the population. She said many barriers still exist in the society impeding their success and realization of their full potential. As per census 2011, India has over 26.8 million persons with disabilities and as per 2011 census, there are about 29,631 persons with disabilities in Nagaland, which is about 1.5% of the total population, she said. The Beauty Director and Nodal Officer Imgong Zenla of the Social Welfare Department and Daytono Nakro, State Commissioner for Persons with Disabilities, also addressed the gathering. That approximately one in five people live with some form of a disability. Therefore, it is a given fact that there will be disabled people in any kind of setting in the community. These are very significant figures and it is a sad reality that in many societies, including ours, persons with disabilities often face physical, social, economic and attitudinal barriers that exclude them from participating fully and effectively as equal members of their society. Stigma, discrimination and neglect all too often mean that they experience poorer health, lower educational achievements, lower employment and labor force participation rates, and higher rates of poverty than the rest of the population. Around 15% of the world's population, or estimated 1 billion people, live with disabilities. They are the world's largest minority. This figure is increasing through population growth, 
medical advances and the aging process. The World Health Organization says that this figure will continue to grow. As per census 2011, India is home to over 26.8 million persons with disabilities. Census 2011 also records 29,631 persons with disabilities in Nagaland, which is about 1.5% of our total population. However, I've been made to understand that this is a very conservative figure and the actual number would be much higher since the data has not been updated in the intervening years. I hope that we will get a more accurate figure in the near uh, in the new census regularly and it encourages people to be more helpful and understanding of the disabled people. The responsibility for building an accessible community does not just rest with persons with disabilities. It rests with all of us. So on this day and every day, let us work together in finding innovative solutions to build an accessible and equitable world for all. Finally, every human is an artist. The dream of your life is to make beautiful art. More than 5,000 students and aspirants of the Arunachal Pradesh Public Service Commission held a mass protest rally after the All Nishi Students' Union called for a rally to express solidarity with the aspirants over an alleged paper leak. The rally started from Dera Natung Government College to the tennis court in Itanakar. ANSU President Napam Dotum informed that a 13-point memorandum will be submitted to Chief Minister Bhima Khandu. The demands included monitoring props by the Enforcement Department and the High Court, immediate dismissal of all government officers involved in the scam, declaration of the exams null and void, and that no exam should be conducted until the investigation is complete, among others. है जो आज इस समारोह को संबोधित किया वो अंशु और निशी स्टूडेंट के द्वारा ना प्रदेश पब्लिक सर्विस कमीशन हम ये बोलते हैं जहां तक रहा सवाल मेरा पांच दिन से इट वॉज मी अगर हमको दाउत है बोलने से आपका तची पोरू चेयरमैन को पूछो या तदक मालक चेयरमैन को पूछो हम जब कभी भी अगर सीएम मीटिंग में होम मिनिस्टर मीटिंग है बोलने से आई वॉज द पर्सन टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन तक जो इन्वेस्टिगेट करना है बोलने वाला आई वॉज द पर्सन हम हमेशा स्ट्रेस दिया है हम हमेशा स्ट्रेस दिया है इसलिए बोलता है ट्रस्ट डेपिस्ट का इशू लेट अस नॉट मे 
मेरा लीडरशिप में ऐसे नहीं होगा हम आप लोग को हम सिर्फ सही और गलत को बोल रहे हैं हम भी बोलते हैं कि ए पी एस अरुणाचल प्रदेश पब्लिक सर्विस कमीशन में आपका पकेट जरंग से ऊपर इन्वेस्टिगेट होना चाहिए क्यों होना चाहिए बेसिस ये है आप बोलता है कि पेपर सेटिंग में आप जाके देखना पेपर सेटिंग में बोलना है कि विथ कोदल फॉर्मेलिटीज पेपर सेटा को ये करता है प्रिंटिंग को बोलता है हम लोग मिलके पूछना है कि सरकार को वो कोदल फॉर्मेलिटीज क्या है सरकार ने बताता है हम लोग देखने के लिए पूछना है इतना आदमी को अरेस्ट कर रहा है उसने एस आई बोला था या मैं मोरिया गांव का बेच था आप लोग में से कोई विजनेस बन के आता नहीं वो मेरा चाचा है वो मेरा मामा है वो मेरा अंकल है वो मेरा कम्युनिटी का है इसलिए यहाँ में एक मोरिया गांव का काम बोला दो जब आंसु स्टैंड करे आप लोग जानता है तो सच को विटनेस भी देना है कोर्ट से कैसे एक्यूत होता है विटनेस नहीं होता है यहाँ में सिर्फ प्रोसेसन आंसू का प्रोसेसन में ए पी सी एस का पेस्को को चेंज करेगा बोलने से नहीं होगा जैसे यहाँ में हल्ला बोलता है आप में से जो जो इशू को जानता है जो जो आदमी को दावता है आप उसका विटनेस भी बनना है तब समाज चेंज होगा दिस इज द प्रैक्टिकल प्रॉब्लम The FEG of the All India United Democratic Front Chief Maulana Badruddin Ajmal was burnt today afternoon in Garim Ganj district of Assam. Garim Ganj district's BJP workers and its youth wing members took out a rally on Garim Ganj town's main road chanting slogans against Ajmal and later burnt his FEG. The AG Dadels warned Ajmal for his controversial remarks that other communities apart from Muslims marry in their 40s but before that carry out live-in relationships or are forced to marry because of such fallouts. The agitators asserted that the alleged practices are not followed by Hindus. On Friday, Ajmal, while attending a marriage ceremony in Garim Ganj, gave the controversial statement. In his statement, he said the Chief Minister of Assam, Dr. Himanda Biswa Sarma, is popular and he can run away with four to five young Muslim girls if he could, referring to Love Jihad. विचार हिंदू धर्म लैका बेहतर मंत्य ना पाती लगे हिंदू धर्म लै मे जो इलेक्शन आए क्या पार्टी काम करमगंज बड़ा बिल्कुल आए हिंदू धर्म लो एक मैं बेलेग मंत्य कर चीफ मिनिस्टर साहब को आह्वान करूँगा कि आप तो माशाला इस वक्त पूरे हिंदुस्तान के चीफ मिनिस्टरों में प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी के बाद आपका नंबर आ रहा है अमित शाह जी के बाद आपका नंबर आ रहा है हाँ तो इसलिए आपको तो कोई कमी नहीं है आप दो चार पांच लव जिहाद खुद कर लो ठीक है हमारी मुसलमान बच्चियों को भगा के लेके जाओ कहाँ रखोगे वो जगह हम लोग को बता देना हम आपको मिठाई देने आएंगे हम झगड़ा करने नहीं समझेगा नहीं हमारी मुसलमान बच्चियों को आप भगा ले जाओ लेकिन आप अपने घर में चार पांच मुसलमान लड़कियों को ले जाओ भगा के रखो और लव जिहाद उनसे करो जितना शर्म में ताकत है Time for a short break, so stay tuned. Payal Secure Center, Burma Camp Walford Road, opposite Police Point, Dimapur. Contact 9863758600 or 6909717178. Welcome back. Mikalia Chief Minister Conrad K. Sangma has admitted there is no infrastructure available for or manpower for the newly created community and rural development blocks and civil subdivisions as these are only on paper presently. Talking to media on the sidelines of a program in Shillong, Conrad Sangma said there is a huge 
financial implication for the creation of the blocks and civil subdivisions such as salary aspects which will be about INR2 grow. Some are told reporters that the opposition TMC had alleged that the Mekalaya government was on a spree inaugurating community blocks and civil subdivisions in the state. However, most of these are still on paper due to lack of infrastructure and manpower. So there will be financial implications. Uh, you know, blocks on an average may have a salary implication of about two crores, and uh, subdivision also approximately same plus minus depending on uh, total number of manpower that we will ultimately put in there. Uh, so these are uh, implications that are there. Of course, we'll have to put up buildings at the end and uh, infrastructures, uh, which will be something that will be phased out in the long run, and will not have an immediate impact on it. But obviously, we have to create the. Uh, the civil subdivisions and the buildings. Like for example, um, you know, earlier also, uh, Dr. Mukul, when he was chief minister, he had given the civil subdivision in uh, in um, in uh, Raksamgri. But uh, that building, I have just sanctioned just now. After eight years, uh, the civil subdivision has been functioning from a temporary office, and I've just sanctioned it, and a new building will come up there. Chokpot, he had announced a civil subdivision during his time, just before the elections. So I don't know whether that whether he would again term that also as an elections uh, you know gimmick when he did it uh, in, uh, in in 2013 and 12 when he had given the Chokpot and the uh, Raksamgri subdivision. So uh, it's easy for him to just look back and uh, you know and assess why he had done it. So uh, maybe that was the reason why he did it for himself at that time. But our planning is uh, very clear. We're doing it to take it uh, closer to the administration to the people. And uh, as we move along, we'll create infrastructures, recruit people, and we will ensure that we appoint them. Conrad Sangma said the main objective of the Mekalaya Democratic Alliance government to create new community and rural development blocks and civil subdivisions is to bring administration closer to the people. National People's Party National President and Chief Minister Conrad K. Sangma said he will contest only from South Dura constituency. Amidst the speculation that the CM contest from the two constituencies, Sangma clarified his stand and said he will only be contesting from one seat. Speaking to reporters, Sangma said that there is no question of him leaving his home constituency, South Dura. Uh, in terms of contesting from another constituency, uh, I have not decided on that yet. The party also has not decided on that yet. We will see the situation, how it unfolds. But as I said, my primary constituency, which is uh, South Tura, is the constituency where, as of now and at the moment, I intend to contest. And I will contest from South Tura. I can't give those details because uh, that's secret. So if I give that out, then I'll be giving out our plan of the party. So I cannot talk about those. The ones that you've seen, two that have designed, are the two that have we're already in that list. And uh, let's see, maybe some more will come up. The Heritage in Gohima hosted the Hornbill Darts Masters 2022 the previous evening. The event was, was organized by Fun Tree Crew under the aegis of the Indian Darts Council. The team events champions won INR 1.20 lakh, while the runners up INR 80,000, followed by the joint third winners who won INR 30,000 each. Nancy Ambrose, the president of the Malaysian Darts Association, also addressed the championships. The Department of Tourism supported the event. Triple ringers were the champions, Team Courier, the runners-up, and the Dark Knights and Metal Care at the joint third. In the singles event, Nidin Kumar emerged the champion, Sangam Roy, the runners-up, and VK Hile Suho, and Suketu Ahir, the joint third, and Mohan Goel. Viral D. Mehta, Shailender Singh Dixit and Lima Doshi at joint fifth. And most promising player prize went to Nimenyo Soho. The best check out prize was to Mutit Sadani. The best leg prize to Sangam Roy. And the most 180s prize was to Suketu Ahir. Telangana Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao's daughter and TRS lawmaker K. Kavita met her followers on Saturday ahead of her appearance before the Central Bureau of Investigation in the Delhi Liquor Scheme case. The Telangana Rastra Samiti MLC met and greeted the party cater and supporters at her Hyderabad residence before leaving for the Prakati Pavan CM camp office in the city. On Friday, Kavita informed the CBI had summoned her in connection with a Delhi excise policy case. 
She said that she could meet the authorities at her residence in Hyderabad on December 6. She has been issued a CBI notice under Section 160 of CRPC seeking her clarification, Kavita said. She has informed that the authorities that she can meet them at her residence in Hyderabad on December 6, as per the request, Kavita said. A dense layer of fog engulfed Srinagar as the temperature dipped to sub-zero here on Saturday. Bonfires came to people's rescue as they wrapped themselves in thick woolen clothes to brace for the winter season. As per the Media Meteorological Department, the Dal Lake area will experience a minimum temperature of minus 1.0 today. As the cold wave tightened its grip over Jammu and Kashmir with all meteorological stations in the valley recording sub-zero temperatures, the hot layers in Srinagar and Ataturi's place have started preparing for winter. To keep rooms warm for two days, the hotel owners have installed central heating boilers and are using electric blankets on beds. They have installed a heating system in rooms to keep the rooms warmer. These hoteliers expect a huge flow of tourists like the previous year and bookings are already made by many tourists to come to Kashmir in the winter season. That's all we have for now. For more news, keep watching Hornbill TV.